good evening to all of you. And I can see the excitement building up because we have a very special speaker today, and that is Shubha Joshi. And Shubha Joshi is special because she brings a very different and a unique perspective today about under understanding chakras. So she called it the biography of chakras. So that was something very exciting. And I'm sure this title has intrigued a lot of you. And before proceeding further and trying to understand from Shubha what exactly she means when she says biography of chakras, let me tell you a little bit about her. Yeah. So Shubha is a dynamic and a versatile academic consultant specializing in Waldorf-inspired training for mainstream schools and kindergartens. Her role includes program development, safety protocols, teacher training, and valuable student skill building programs, including corporate training in spoken English and soft skills. She has been principal of Pratham International School, Bangalore, she is associated with several schools and has worked as non-executive director, academics of Balsam Academy, Rani Pitt. And now this is the most impressive one with a very strong educational background. Shubha holds an MS in computer science from the University of Houston, Texas. She's an MSc in physics from Karnataka University. Her commitment to education is further demonstrated by her diploma in teacher's training from the American Tesol Institute and a B.Ed. from Bangalore University. She has also enriched her expertise with certificate courses in English language enhancement, creative teaching, Waldorf education and student counseling. Now, this sounds so big, right? I mean, there's so much to her, but beyond her professional endeavors, Shubha's personal interests include reading, exploring traditional arts and crafts, and delving into human understanding. She's engaged in the practices of radical, anthroposophy, and oponopono. So Shubha will now delve into the fascinating theme of human biography based on chakras. So over to you, Shubha, the platform is yours and we're very excited. Thank you very much, thank you. Uh, well, I mean, it did, it did read quite a bit, but I'm nowhere close to anywhere that says, I feel so, um, you know, compelled to prove it, but I can't. I mean, they are just uh, on the paper for getting a job, I guess. But likewise, it's completely different. So anyway, thank you and uh, good evening, everyone. What I would like to delve into today is how radical is so very much connected to anthroposophy on which I do my world of teacher training and how it is connected to life and child development and my whole biography. So, um, you know, I, I remember the first time I did uh, the course, uh, I converted all the chakra knowledge into my world of training and they mapped so beautifully. Um, it should be one of my notes. That was during COVID. I started this training uh, radical in uh, March 2020, and I was converting every knowledge of radical into my training, and that has been a hit. Uh, I mean, hit in the sense not in terms of uh, uh, like commercial way, but it touches people so so very well. I'll just quickly uh, share um, the diagrams are a little better than just speaking, so. Um, what I have here is if you look at this curve, this represents my life, my biography. Um, so um, in, in a very simplistic way. So I have my birth, you know, um, after nine months of being in my mother's womb. Um, with that begins my physical development on this planet Earth and goes on for about seven years. Uh, I mean, I'm still growing, putting on weight, losing weight, etc you know, growing in terms of losing my hearing, turning gray, etc. 
but predominant growth of coming into this human proportion happens in the first seven years of life. And we label that, uh, I mean, that's uh, the band. I'll come to that a little later. Hold on to that. Once the dentition happens, the tooth falls out, the life forces available to my body is um, ready for the next development, which is emotional development. You know, that um, physical development in, in anthroposophy or world of education is connected with my hands and foot. Uh, emotional development is something to do with my heart, development of my feelings, my emotions, etc. So this goes on for about seven years until the puberty hits. This is when we see children having lots of confusions, lots of breakdowns because there is adolescent issues um, and, and they really don't know where to turn on to. Um, and this is a, a stage that we got to really work on um, I mean, right now, what we do in radical is something to do with this with this second stage of development because I believe um, we are all stuck in the second stage of child development. We have we have grown physically to several stages, but um, like like um, wisdom wise or behavior wise, attitude wise, we are still very emotional. We get very perturbed very quickly. I'm still angry, jealous, upset, whatnot, whatnot. So very much like that second stage of development, I'm stuck in, and very few of us um, are privileged or blessed to move over to the next stage, which is intellectual development that goes on till 21 years of age, that is when the brain development happens, the myelination, the connection between neurons, ability to understand, ability to judge, take decision, take risk. I mean, not risk taking is up to around 14 years of age, but taking calculated risk and exploring all that happens in the third stage of development. So birth till 21 years is ideally human childhood, the longest ever. Because we do have elements of my physical body, then I have my etheric body, I have my astral body, and then I have my ego body. And, and for that to develop, to some extent, we do need that long time. And around 21 of years of age, the ego body develops provided my first stage of development, which is birth till seven, second stage till 14, is done with care with awareness um, and and many of us may have missed it many of us may have young children we can go back and do that if we have not done we do have chance to I mean radical is definitely there to help us um, understand why we did what we did and to kind of get the um, understanding of um, of our purpose in life and all these under 21 years are physiological development of the body. You know, the physical is my hands and legs, my emotional is my heart, breathing rhythm, etc. And intellectual development is all about my brain, understanding cognitive abilities. So this stage, you know, we are in that green band. So the intellectual stage continues till about 28 years. Uh, where I'm still, I'm graduating from college, looking for a job, getting a job, settling down in a job, so learning about the job, etc. So that goes for about 14 years, the intellectual development. And then I get stuck in my emotional again. You know, it may be a little different now. You know, 28 years, you know, we may be getting married. We have to understand our spouses, another family. Maybe, you know, there is a clash with my boss in, in my office and you know, promotion issues, whatever. There is a little bit of, again, turmoil that we go through for another seven years of time, plus minus, you know, six months to a year. So about anywhere from six to nine years, we kind of go through that phase if my first stage was done well, 7 to 14 was done well, dealt well, and there was a guidance that I received, this stage will not seem as bad. But I then quickly transitioned into physical. You know, 35 years, I'm settled with my job. Maybe I've adjusted with my spouse, my in-laws. So I'm now building, I mean, looking about, you know, building a home, um, buying a car or settling down, something like that. You know, there's still a physical development, but in terms of more material growth, maybe I get a promotion, I'm happy with the salary, I get etc. So that goes on for about another, you know, until 49 years of age. So I get that settling down again for another 14 years of age. 
And again, I get into my uh, emotional stage, you know, 49, I start wondering, oh my God, what am I up to? You know, for me, radical was right in this in this uh, period. I'm, I'll be turning 56 next month. So right in the middle of this stage is when I got into radical. You know, there is support provided we are ready for it. And that something has to happen previously. You know, many of us go through this emotional turmoil, but we are never ready to take any help, right? Uh, even though they go through a lot, but anyway. So this is the stage when there is a little mature maturity in terms of uh, interpreting the emotional. And you know, I start thinking about, I mean, is it my problem? Could there be my, um, you know, uh, contribution to this problem, or should I just blame somebody else? So I'm, I've matured a little bit, hopefully. And then I get into intellectual stage again. You know, I begin to understand, okay, there is radical to help me. There is anthroposophy to help me. I can read this. I can reach out. So let me understand this. This is where my intellectual or knowledge gets converted into wisdom. You know, where, where people, I mean, see many, many youngsters these days don't respect elders because we are not worthy of that, you know, because we don't know. We are only demanding, commanding out of our own fears, whatever. So this this is good, you know. I'm happy. I'm I'm actually looking forward to this, and I'll have next 14 years of intellectual maturity happening. You know, maybe I'll be um, a bit more wiser. But around 70 again, you know, my body is frailing. You know, I may feel oh, I'm dependent on somebody now and whatnot. But again, if I have this proper backing. Um, it may not be bad. I accept it gracefully. We talk about graceful aging and all of that. So it may happen beautifully. And, you know, for all we know, my health may cooperate as well because my mind is working. My brain is more settled, more grounded, etc. Then I get to the 84th year, which is considered very, very good in Indian situation. 84 um, years is 1,008 moons. That is like you know, all your karmas get dissolved, even without any of your effort, if we have lived that long. I mean, I don't know how far that, that that's how it says. So 84 years is when I'm ready to, again, go back into the ground, go back into the physical reality. You know, it's like excarnation. This is from anthroposophy, where Rudolf Steiner talks about excarnating, going, transitioning to the next whatever it is and 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 I can I, I assuming I would have done uh, what I was supposed to do in this life when I took birth so birth is called incarnation where the soul kind of comes into my physical body live through that process and then excarnate zero to three until first three years of my life is considered extremely important that is where um, the inclinations the actions the the expressions, whatever, if you are able to understand the baby, we will be able to kind of map the whole biography. This is the whole biography. We'll be able to map as to what the child has come here for, and we can guide them appropriately rather than telling them, you know, our family is doctor's family, become a doctor, or, or you have to earn more money, become an IT engineer. You know, we don't get into all of that provided we study the child in the first three years. And the minute the child is able to stand upright, balance on both their feet, um, they have that inter, um, that identity, that ego, um, I mean, ego in the good sense, that I am an individual. So there's this physical development, emotional, intellectual, they're all intertwined, they all coexist, but one of them a little bit more dominant than the other. It's not exclusive, you know? Uh, they're all inclusive, but there is something a little bit more predominant. This is about the stages of our development in seven year cycles. Now, when you look at the same image, the same thing, you you look at the first 14 years. We begin with the physical development in the first seven years. And then there is a transition. There's always this transition. And going on up to settling down with emotions is my Muladhar Chakra. You know, where, I mean, this goes so very well with Maslow's theory also. It's it's where you are grounding yourself. You are settling down with your emotions, with your body, with your body, being very balanced and ready to take on what life has in store for me. You know, this is where we, in, in, in terms of world of education or childhood development, we say this is when we 
got to be very loving, caring, develop the imagination skills, have conversation with children, allow them to explore free play, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Because this is where they're really incarnating on, on, on the planet Earth. Right. And then the next 14 years is going to be my Swadhisthana Chakra, you know, where, um, you know, I have matured, but I have these um, feelings, emotions, though they're settled, right? They're not like going crazy here and there. And I'm a little intelligent now. I know what to enjoy, what not to enjoy, how to do, how not to do, etc. So um, I can do it in the right way. So I do not disturb the environment that I'm in. Or I do not go overboard or underboard, you know, extrovert, introvert, or depressed and super excited, ADD, ADHD, whatever it is, you know, we don't get into all of that. The next 14 years is going to be about establishing control over myself, over my family, over my physical requirements. Um, you know, feeling in control is going to come into picture with Manipura Chakra. You know, we have good, I mean, the of course, Manipura is going to be in its own way during Muladhar development also, but it's predominantly that. And we are going, you know, if you go to Maslow's theory, Muladhar Chakra is about all roti kapta makan, you know, take care of your physical. Then Swadhishtan is about feeling good, um, you know, enjoying whatever I have, earning potential, whatever. Then it comes to um, authority over things with Manipura Chakra. Then comes Anahata Chakra, you know, the where we are transitioning into love, receiving love, giving love, you know, is it only my family? Can I extend it to people around me? Can I contribute something to the society? You know, that 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 entire give and take, and I can so very well relate to this, you know, um, and, and in fact, right now, in last two months, I have been feeling my chest being like blocked, you know, it's been stretching and in contracting and, you know, and radical is my way out of this. It's admit is my favorite, favorite statement. And then it is trans, uh, transform and transcend. And that helps me so very well, especially during this transition. I mean, I told you I'll be turning 56 soon. So I'm going to be transitioning from my Anahata Chakra to Vishuddhi, you know, where I, and I, I started doing it only when I was doing this presentation, I was thinking about making this presentation. I started thinking, you know, why is my congestion so much? And uh, and I have started asserting without my knowledge, you know, actually a month ago, I told Mamta also we had the um, chakra revision and I was telling her, I mean, August 28th is my day when, when I really felt a clear uh, transition happening, you know, with, with being able to say no, with being able to stand in my space and, and assert, which is all transitioning me into that phase of chakra. And, and hopefully it'll get better and, and I'll be okay. I mean, I'll be like Atman says, you know, um, um, with uh, easy, effortless and fun. With ease, effortless and fun. I mean, it would just happen because we are meant to do that. But we have so many blocks that is where Radical comes into picture to clear all those blocks and get me going. And then finally, the next last 14 years is that clairvoyance that I can develop with, with all these chakras developed and in place where I could see why I was born for and, and what I can do in, in the remaining years that I have with me and achieve that, that purpose that I have come here to do. Right now, I, I myself, I'm still in that confusion. I really don't know. I mean, is it teacher education? Is it self-study? Is it something to do with community? And, um, uh, so that confusion probably will will kind of erase in that intellectual development of the green band where the knowledge will become wisdom, where Vishuddhi becomes a little bit more stronger. And then I get into that Agya Chakra where I can I can foresee what's in store for me and, and hopefully, um, uh, you know, um, get through and excarnate very gracefully. Right. So um, this is in short as to... Um, what I wanted to cover. And I think I have 10 minutes left. If you have any questions, I can go here and there. I mean, if, if, I, I just lose track of time. But if you have any questions, I would love to take it up and see how best I can clarify some of the doubts. 
So who would like to come forward with their questions? Yes, Sharon. Yes, you raised your Hi. hand. <clears throat> Hi, that was a beautiful presentation. Uh, I was looking forward to this. I actually uh, tuned in yesterday and then realized on the post it was Wednesday and not Tuesday. <laughs> so thank you. It was a beautiful presentation. I have one question. You know, I saw that towards the latter half of our life, we come to know, you know, what we should do, what we shouldn't do, what our life purpose is. How can it be made easier for the younger generation so they don't have to reach like 56 or something like that in order to yeah. uh, know? Because they are they are so like you very in one in the beginning, what you said is like older people, they're not listening to older people, not because they are disrespecting, because we just older people are this is my way or the highway type, and they have yeah, they are, exactly. they're not participating in that sort of my way or the highway. Mm -hmm. They are highly intelligent, they are highly developed. Mm -hmm. So how is it possible? Would it be possible that the younger generation can get this sort of information? Yeah. So it's a lot more, why wait till you're 56 to 70 when you can do it when you're, say, 40 or 45, that sort yeah, of thing? Definitely, definitely. One way to do that is recognizing our patterns. And um, you go backwards. Uh, that's that's the bag of your work, actually. You go backwards um, from from whatever age the child is. Um, I mean, if, if you want to help the child and if it is your child and you can go back to their childhood and try to remember as much as possible from their childhood. And, and I cannot remember from uh, for my children and I want to get this biography for them. So I'm asking my mother, my cousins and send me the photos and how they looked, what they wanted. And, and then I can I can sort of tell them, see, this is something you were doing when you were a child. This is something you were very inclined to do. And, and they resonate with that now. And um, then that way they can align to their path. So we understanding that. But if we are like, say, 28, 30 years of age, then I go backwards one year at a time and then get to that seven-year cycle. And something that happened to me between 21 and 28 has happened from 14 to 21 also there you will see that pattern and and any pattern is something that we have to heal that is where radical comes into picture you heal that pattern and then you are out of it right and and if you are like 28 to 35 you will have emotional kind of patterns that are repeating and you would definitely see it between 7 and 14 in a different way. I mean, if you have a power struggle with your boss you'll probably have a power struggle with your parents or neighbor or sibling or somebody so you heal that power struggle, whether in 14 or it's like inner child healing. We all go and do that, right? So you, you do that part and then they're out of it. They're already mature to handle their next emotional cycle. Does that answer you, Sharon? It makes a lot of sense. Thank you. Because I've done a lot of inner child work. So that makes mm -hmm. a lot. All the different cycles, I don't know. Mm -hmm. So it's thank you for sharing that I can go there heal that, and then they are ready for the next one. Yeah. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Anyone else has questions? Today is the day for real revelations. So anybody would like to ask anything more? Or ask the Shubha to speak on something more on this topic? All right. Maybe I could uh, give a little bit of work on uh, identifying these patterns or how yes, we identify the patterns, right? Um, I mean, if I if a plant study is one, um, I mean, even before plant study. So if if I take any man-made object, anything, okay, and um, this is mouse, right? So you observe it for five minutes you know just observe everything and typically we would never have observed it you know all I know I mean I may not even know that there is a wheel on it right I mean I'm just used to it so observe it uh, very very carefully and um, then you put it down and write as much as you remember of it and somewhere in this, I have done a lot of this, so uh, I can assure you, somewhere in this process, you will see that reflecting in your own character, in your own behavior, in your own attitude. And, and if it is pleasing, then you're fine, you're on the way. But typically, anything that's pleasing, uh, it, it, it's, I mean, to begin with, it may not be very pleasing. Something I don't like, something I thought, I, I wish it was a little different kind or... 
whatever, you know, it rolled a little bit more freely, you know, so, th so then you relate it to, I mean, I remember uh, Mamta always doing this, you know, when I say something is aching, uh, what do you not want to hear? What do you, why, when choking, uh, what do you not want to speak? So you start relating to that and then heal it. And you do the same thing again, next day, again, next day, in about two, three iterations of the same object uh, for about five minutes. You will know in and out of it. In other words, you know in and out of yourself for that aspect. I may not know in and out of myself. Right? So this is one exercise that we can do to kind of identify and heal if I don't know the pattern itself. So um, another one is to observe plants. You know, that's, that's a wonderful exercise where typically the same time every day, if not at least 40 minutes to 45 minutes of a plant that you just go sit. You just, uh, it's good if you take a tree because tree has more dimensions. You know, it has a trunk and a branch and leaves and flowers and maybe a bird nest and ants and all of that. So you observe that and observe for 15 minutes and then write some words on, on what it is that you are connecting to and then maybe draw the picture of the plant and then go back and do it again the next day. Whenever you do it, it is uh, good if you do for seven continuous days and, and there is shift happening in the plant. So what we are trying to relate here is my first stage of child development is about physical development. My physical body is made of mineral world, you know, calcium, potassium, iron, whatever, whatever. And the second um, stage we are talking about emotional, which is uh, coming from plant world, which is etheric body. Plant world is stationary, has life, but stationary doesn't have too much of freedom. And my third stage of development is going to come from animal kingdom, where I have desires, I'm feeling hungry, I bark, I have my, you know, security, I have um, my territory and all of those things. So human being has all these three, mineral, you know, plant and animal in me. And if I just remain that, then I never become a human being. So I have to go beyond all of these three, use my consciousness, to transform and transcend these three um, levels to have that human consciousness and see what is it that I'm doing. You know, am I happy with just building my home and having a car and you know painting my house, looking at making it look beautiful, wearing nice clothes? Am I done with that, or there is something beyond? Yeah. Right. And again, uh, self actualization, as Maslow says, is the ultimate, and we have to transform transcend to that right and that happens only after 21 years of age because i need to have my plant body in place mineral body in place and my animal body in place for me to host that soul that is wanting to progress that's why the child developments or proper child development becomes extremely essential right so uh, plant study is something that's going to give us that insight on, on understanding the plant world within me, like cosmos and microcosm, macrocosm and all that, right? Observing something outside is something inside. And third exercise could be uh, observing any bird or any animal. You know, we don't get to observe. We can just look at a video where you don't have any other animal but that one animal. So, for example, if you take um, a video of a mouse, um, like coming in and out of its hole and looking for whatever grains, pick the grain, go back into the hole, store it, come back again, look around, you know, look at its little legs, look at its little tail and look at the way it has this whiskers and, and, and how it eats. And, you know, if you keenly observe it for five minutes, you see that reflecting in me. Any animal is OK and you can do different animals because each of them will will shake something different in us so this is when we do um 
you know, during uh, when we are normal, as part of daily exercise, like part of taking bath, you know, like brushing your teeth, taking bath, washing, you know, whatever. Just these exercises you do every day for a few days, then, then you begin understanding, okay, all three are in me, all three I need to integrate, all three I need to manage, and then I need to go go towards what I'm destined to, to become in this life. You know, at one point of time, you know, I think it was after radical, I used to have, why is that person like that? If that person is there, then I should also be like that. I should also become like that. You know, though we know we talk, you know, that we are all unique and I don't need to compare and, and you have your beauty, I have my beauty, but that doesn't really sink into the subconscious, right? If you are making more money or if you have more fan followers, I'm always jealous or some way, somewhere it kind of lingers on. And and when I understood this aspect of it, you know, maybe some of that animal instincts are not settled in me yet. Maybe that plant aspects are not still settled in me yet. Right. And these are again related to like our Panch Mahabhutas, right? I mean, the first stage is more like earth element. Uh, plant is more water element, animal is more like air element, and we have to transcend all of these and go to the fifth, the space element. But but everything, I mean, what I understand as of today is that crux is in that 21 years, and if I can't, if I'm beyond 21, I can always go back, you know, in my biography, track back and fix it, come back. So that that's the beauty of radical. Wow, yeah. Shubha, this has been so fascinating. I mean, all years, everything, because I think all of us are still stuck, you know, somewhere in the mineral plant and the yeah. animal world. And as trying to be humans, not realizing that we have not dealt with this area and still wanting to become that much human to evolve to the spiritual level, the space level. Yeah. So that is why we are not able to complete our journeys in many ways. I'm mm -hmm. not saying we don't do it, but yeah. honestly, this revelation that you have given today, this is absolutely fantastic. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much for it. I mean, it, it's really uh, not a word was to be missed today. And that is what I loved about your presentation. Thank you so much. But Mamta has a question right now. So yeah. yes, Mamta. Um, I don't have a question because uh, uh, what she shared and what she explained, uh, you know, it's so crystal clear. And then you resonated with each and every word that, that she was uh, speaking. And how we say uh, the world is our mirror. And then how she gave the experience, um, an example of, uh, you know, observing a, a computer mouse. And that also represents you. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Everything is energy and everything. Um, you, you know, uh, I uh, uh, I have heard, I had heard about her expertise in in her presentation in her training and everything. And uh, thank you, Shuva. Today thank I you. had this privilege of attending your session. Oh, thank you. Thank, thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Mamta. You're thank you. Thank you so much. So, thank you. Thank you. And Sharon? as rightly Sharon has a message. Um, can we have part two of this discussion, please? You know, amazing. And that, that's true. I second it. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Sharon, you raised your hand for the same I thing. I have a question. No, I have a question. Okay. Uh, I was very, I was very interested in this uh, thing, this uh, minerals, plants, animals. Is it like, is the chakra wise, is it like root chakra and uh, sacral chakra is equivalent to the animal or to the minerals or to the plants? Well, uh, you can relate it in some way as long as we remain that, but we as human beings transcend. So you kind of transform that mineral world into space element or, or plant world into the higher consciousness. But um, like how I showed in the PowerPoint, your first 14 years is where the child development wise root chakra is one that we need to work on. Got it. Please, I would love another session to hear more details. It's amazing. It's amazing. Absolutely fantastic. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I mean, it's, it's all because of us, right? <laughs> it's my story there. <laughs> so, Shubha, are you ready to come on for part two? Do you think you'd have more to tell us about 
not just biography, but you know, more in this direction, which will help our students and all of us also to understand ourselves uh, better, to appreciate radical better, to sort of be in that consciousness so beautifully, so that we are able to tide over in the real world with the mineral, the plant and the animal world and move forward. Do you think you would be, I mean, I'm saying it on camera, would you like to do it next week again? Next week, I'm not in town. All right, so we'll figure it out. And But yeah. we'll definitely have you back with some yeah. more elements that you think we can incorporate and have it for sure. the students, everybody. Sure, sure. Thank sure. you. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you very much. Absolutely brilliant. Thank, Thank you so you. much. And uh, I request all people present on the platform, please write in Circle of Peace Food Progress group your feedback because that is important. That makes us know what else you want for yourselves, you know, on the platform. So see you there at within five minutes of now. But right now, thank you, Shubha. It thank you. Yeah. And thank you very much. I admit everything under the loving care of radical consciousness. So do we. Yeah. So do we.